Hey guys, how are you? We are about to start. I wanna, um, I wanna remind you that we are live. Hey guys, how are you? Sorry about that. We were having a few issues with the sound. So I want to remind you that we are live on Facebook and YouTube. In case you have to just, I don't know, sum off for any reason. So today we're going to focus on React Native and Expo. The idea of, is introducing you guys to the concept of how to create an application, right? Um, so today we're going to... There you go. Um, so sorry, we're having a few technical issues with sound. Um, we're about to start. The idea of today is to introduce you to the world of mobile development. You guys um, might think that it's really complicated to start doing the uh, mobile development, but uh, in truth, it's not that hard especially considering technologies like React Native, right? It is hard if you guys have to start with something, for example, to, you have to start learning Java to first learn Java to then learn Android development, learn all the platform related to Android Studio. And it like all that complexity, it ends up adding up and it's, it's super complicated. But when we move that to React Native, we're going to see that it's super simple. You guys might have something working literally in just hours. The only knowledge that you guys need to know is just the basics of JavaScript. Um, JavaScript is a friendly programming language. If you if you want, it is it, it is a dynamically typed language, so it's not that hard to get started. There is there are many resources out there for you guys to consult. There are many free courses about JavaScript. JavaScript is maybe the most popular programming language in the world. So that means there is a lot of documentation. There are a lot of resources to, to check on, to check. So that, uh, that it's maybe, or probably the, 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 the biggest um, uh, advantage of working with React Native. On top of that, if you guys are already working with front end and you have the notions of React, right? Uh, everything is going to be useful, right? It's not React Native. It's not just it's not just sharing a name. React Native shares pretty much everything with React. We will have to change a few components, and and but but the state, the way we pass properties, the, the way we process, the way we test, everything is going to remain similar to what we know with React. So in addition to learning React Native, if you want, you will also be able to start with basic React development for, for front-end development, like just a, a, web, a website or something related. Um, so the idea of today is, again, show you how easy it is to get started with it. Um, so let me... Let me one second. There you go. So we will be answering all your questions. So there is a question box in this particular webinar where you guys can just post all your questions and we will be answering them. We will try to answer all of them. Uh, we will try to also keep an eye on the live, live streaming option. 
Um, not so sure about that because there are many different channels, but uh, we will try to answer all your questions. So let me get started first. We are going, I'm going to share my screen so you guys can, I'm going to make a slow walk through the basics, the basics of React Native and an expo. And right now what I'm doing is I am putting everything in the same bag. It's like I'm speaking about React Native and Expo and React and mobile development. We will try to separate these concepts in this particular uh, in this particular part of the webinar. So we're going to start with, with a few different concepts. And please stop me if you guys have any particular question. I will try to answer what is React Native, what is Expo, what is React, right? And, and try to, to address each one of these points separately. But um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And especially what role they are playing, right? Why do we need Expo or why do we need React for the React Native part, et cetera. So the basics, just for you guys to know, React is a front-end, it started as a front-end framework. It's, special, it's specialized in just to, to create web applications, front-end web applications. Uh, it was started by Facebook. It's a pretty cool framework. It got a lot of traction. When it was released, the main framework out there was Angular. And today, React is eating a lot of market out of Angular, which is still pretty big. It's a good framework, but React is doing things pretty well. React has a couple of other technologies associated. Uh, we have, for example, Redux, and we have Relay, and we have Flux. And, and other technologies that you guys will hear about. Try not to get too caught up on that because, to be honest, the what we have to focus on first is React. And just by knowing React, a tiny framework, because seriously, it's super tiny, you guys will have something working. And it's something that I really, really like, especially coming from, for example, the Angular world. When, when, you, when you learn Angular, you have to learn about so many concepts, right? It's like the learning curve is super steep. For React, that is not the case because we just have to learn the front-end basics, how to create components, how to pass state properties, and that is it. And don't worry, we're going to, to talk about that in a bit. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start before, I'm going to back up a bit, and before we move into the React Native part and the Expo part, we got to talk about basic things. And the most important one is that mobile is eating. So software is eating the world, as Mark, Mark Anderson was saying. Mobile is eating the software world, right? So the if you guys could think five years from now, Computing will be done mainly on mobile devices. Maybe those are not cell phones because mobile is not just cell phones. We can also have something like a tablet or a smartwatch, but the world is clearly seeing um, an increase of mobile devices and we are seeing a trend. It's where we are heading to, right? So it's, it's really important. So if you guys were, I don't know about the, the people present here, but uh, if you guys could think, for example, what happened in the 90s, where were the world going? It was clearly moving out of simple and traditional desktop applications, and the, the, the world was moving towards the web, right? So this is something we're seeing today, and it's something we have to, you guys can see right now. It's You know where the world is going to, and you can just of course, use that as an advantage to gain, to gain um, competitiveness, right? To, for example, if you're if you're already a developer, switching to the mobile world is going to be a good decision, right? Because again, the demand for mobile developers is going to be it's it's increasing and it's going to be crazy in the next few years, um, especially because things are getting interconnected, right? And software is really important. Software is important today. But I guarantee you that the growth is not linear. It's going to be more than, in, in, two, in, in two years from now, it's going to be more than two times important of what it is today because things are exponentially getting connected. So if you guys think about the things that you can 
code and the things that you can work with software today, they are just a handful. It's like if I look around, I have my phone here, I have this laptop, I have a few other things. But what is going to what is going to be that in 10 years? It's like I will probably be able to to code, to program everything in my house from from the door to the car to pretty much to my bike i was talking today with a with a guy that develops um electric bikes and he was thinking about developing a mobile application so you can control your bike from your phone so things are getting more connected and that connection is not happening with a desktop desktop com computer it's happening with a mobile device again phone, tablet, smartwatch, but it's happening indeed with a mobile device. So we have to seize this trend. We have to, we have to flow with this trend. We have to take the most out of it. And you guys today are standing in a great deal of opportunity. So what are the ways we can uh, work today with a mobile application? How can we... Um, how can we develop something to be used in a mobile device? So the simplest issue, could, the simplest solution could be, for example, building a responsive website and telling your customer or your client or your support people, whatever, that they have to, for example, just open a web browser in the mobile device and the 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 application is going to be loaded there. So you just instruct them. If you have a, an iPhone device, please open Safari, go to this website, and you will have your application there. Of course, that is not that it's that is not the preferred way. I mean, think for example, the application you guys use the most, and I don't know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, those applications, YouTube, think about those applications. Think about working all the time with them with a the browser, right? It's not the the preferred platform. It's not going to be the more the most the more energy efficient one. It's not going to be the I don't know the most um, the better the best one to to interact, you know, in a more native way. The other option you guys have now building an application, we're going to switch from just telling instructing your user to use a simple browser in, in their phone to using, for example, to creating an application, a real application. They have to go to the App Store, to the Google Play and install it. And it's something they have an icon in their phone so they will open your application. In that scenario, you guys have two important cases or two, two important scenarios. The first one is building what it's known as, an, as a hybrid application which is basically the same web application you guys were building before, but is now bundled, right, and packaged in a, in a web view. So the application that you actually install from Google Play, for example, is actually just an embedded browser. When the user interacts with that application, and sorry, let me just give you guys an, an example because so you can think about it better. Ionic, right? The, the framework Ionic is exactly this. Um, so what was what I was saying is just it's just a bundle. So what you guys actually install from the App Store is a, a browser. It's an application that bundles a browser and then embedded that browser. And when your user is interacting with the application, what it's actually happening is the the that internal browser that the that application has created is rendering just HTML and it's doing processing with JavaScript. That is not a native application. That means, for example, the, I don't know, think about a selector for um, dates. Those, that the native selector for a date in Android and in um, how, and in, for example, iPhone, they're completely different. In a hybrid application, it's going to be the same one, and the user will not be used to that. Something different, for example, if you guys have to render a map, what it's going to do, the hybrid application, what it's probably going to do is just rendering a map with the no, not the most efficient version. It's, it will just put a bridge and somehow render a not native map. That is not going to be, again, energy efficient, and it's not going to be 
the best experience for you as a user. So the best way we can do is the best. So what is Twitter doing? What is LinkedIn doing? What is Facebook Twitter doing? What are the top level players in the, in the software world doing to develop applications? They build native applications. They build an application that is specially designed for Android or specially designed for iPhone. That gives you the best experience for your user. It's going to be an energy efficient, CPU efficient. It will have native components. So when, when you guys are using Twitter in, the, in, in Android, you will see the, the interactions natively included in an Android device. When you guys are using Twitter in an iPhone device, you will see other native components. But the issue with that is that it's really hard. I mean, you're developing the same application two times, literally, because you have to develop the same application both for Android using Shaba, Android Studio, and iOS, iPhone, with Swift, Xcode, and all that. So you guys are building the same application two times. Of course, it's not what we are expecting. I mean, it's not the most the, the best solution. If you guys are Twitter, indeed, or Twitter is kind of not doing pretty well right now, but if you guys are Facebook and you have a ton of money, you can certainly have different developers. You can have two teams working on the same. They will have a lot of headaches because trust me, even, even a huge company like Facebook, they run into a lot of trouble by having to, by having two different teams working on two completely different platforms with two different code bases, but at the end, they should be the same application. Because again, each, each platform, each, so Android and iOS, for example, and Windows Phone and the others, but let's just focus on Android and iOS, each platform will have different components, but we don't want two completely different applications. We wanna have a, a, a ground base, right? We, have, we wanna have a common point where we, the user, if, if the user ever needs to switch from Android to iOS, for example, the application shouldn't be completely different. It should feel the same. Of course, again, there will be different things because natively there are different components, but the idea is that they should see something similar. So making a summary right here, if you guys, if you want to develop an application, right? You are the CDO of Facebook. You have three different options. Just building something on the web and ask your user to open a browser in the phone and using the web version. Of course, that is out of the table. Or you could use just now building an application. You could use something hybrid or you can use something native. The native version is going to be the best version for your end user. All right, so your end user will have the best experience with a native application because components are going to be native, because performance is going to be the best, because uh, CPU and storage utilization is going to be the best, etc. Now, if you're not Facebook and you do not have a ton of money and you cannot afford having two completely different teams to build two completely different applications to support them, because it's not just building them, then it's going to be supporting them, fixing bugs, reporting bugs, QA, and all that, then you might consider hybrid application. But again, it's not going to give you the best experience to your user. Now, there is a better option. And I took all this time to talk about this because we have a great option, which is, of course, React Native. React Native tries, tries to... React Native tries to bring together these two worlds, the hybrid and the, and the native one, by letting you develop a single application without having to duplicate your code, without having to, to, to support two completely different developer, developing teams and still build a native application. All right, so that's really important. On top of that, you're using two really well-known technologies. One of them, JavaScript. We are moving out from Android and from Objective-C or Swift. And you guys will be using a well-known framework and a pretty good design framework as React. Okay, so we're combining these two options. We are having, we're building just one code base. 
we're building one code base with a really known and easy to use language as JavaScript. We're using a pretty darn good framework as React. And still, we're building native applications for our end users. So you guys will write the code once, you will build two different applications, one for Android users, users another for um, iPhone users, and they will have a native experience. You will combine the best of these two worlds. React Native is something that is it's a reality. It's not um, an experiment. It's not an alpha thing. There are Facebook is currently using React Native. They are using it for their own application. If I don't remember, if I remember correctly, the events part of the actual Facebook application was built using React Native. The, um, there are a couple, I think, the, if you guys browse for Facebook groups, uh, an application to manage groups with Facebook, that is everything built with React Native, and it works really well. Really well sorry. All right, so moving forward, Expo. What is Expo? So we, what we tried to do was give you a, an overview of what React Native meant, meant sorry. And what we are trying to do now is, is, is see what is the role of Expo in this case. So we told you that React Native was, the idea was to write JavaScript, to write JavaScript and use the React framework and have your application built both for Android and iPhone. That part, building the application, was still a headache for the React Native people. Because you were writing, you were sitting and writing the code in, a, in JavaScript using React, but when you had to build it, when you have to test it in your own phone, when you have in the develop during the develop development process on, and all that, you had to somehow connect with the platforms, platform, sorry, um, design for Android and iOS. So to say this clearly, you were building React Native application, but you still had to. Re, uh, to use Xcode to build the actual application. And the building process was a heck. It was taking so long. It, was, it, it wasn't the best experience possible. On top of that, there were the components world was pretty heterogeneous. So there were different types of components depending on what you were trying to do. And Expo is, is clearly tackling that Expo is a tool belt, it's a tool belt, sorry, it's a framework, it's a set of libraries, it's, it's this gigantic thing that comes to ease our lives. Uh, and it's actually a great, great, great thing. So what Expo is going to let us do is, I am going to now show you guys some code and show you some, the first thing that I wanna, uh, App Store iTunes. So Google Play Expo. I want you guys to install this application while I set up my code. Uh, look for Expo in the Android store, right? Google Play and Google, and look for Expo on iTunes. On is this one? Yep. So these two, Expo Client and Expo in Google Play, uh, take a second, install these applications while I set the code. Please go ahead and do that because I will let you interact with us in a second. So what I'm going to do is stop the sharing, share screen, share this entire desktop. There you go. So I want to show you something. I want you guys to um, I'm going to show you my actual device right here. So I'm going to use QuickTime. Uh, where is it? iPhone. 
So you uh, guys are he seeing here, this is my device. All right, so this is my current device. And what I wanna show you is how this expo thing works. So I have a basic application built right here, this one. And it's actually running also on the Android simulator. So it's this one right here. I'm going to sec. I'm going to go to the step one, which is basically the one loaded right here. And you guys can see here the text that I'm using. It's uh, welcome to remoter workshop. And what I'm going to do is take my device. So I'm going to show you my device, this one right here. Again, it's my device, the one I'm holding my hand. And I'm going to load the Expo app. I'm going to tap on scan QR code. And this is seriously my device, you guys can see right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this code right here. And give me one second, I'm going to reload it. One sec, so you guys can also do it. Uh, there we go. So I'm restarting my device. There we go, I'm opening the app. I, what I did was I was I want to show you how I was starting this expo thing, and what I will be doing is I will be loading the application that I'm currently developing. I will be loading that in my phone, and you guys will be able to also load this application in your phones. I don't know where you are. You might be at completely the other, the other end of the world, and you will be able to load this same application. So right here. Uh, you guys can scan this QR code. Again, I'm going to show you right here, scan the QR code. And I will, there you go, opening project. It's opening my project. And let's see if it's actually working. This is live coding, there we go. So it's, it's doing some setup. This is my phone, again, it's, it's exactly what you guys can see it right there. There you go. And it was just loaded right there. And it's exactly what you guys see in my phone. So I'm having the application that I'm currently developing. It's right here in my phone. And it's what you guys can see right there. So what I'm going to do, I, I want to suppose someone Please, in the questions box, is someone actually running this? Do you guys have the Expo app installed? I want to share with you again the QR code so you guys can scan it. Or I can actually share also this URL. But now I think the, the QR code works better. Does anyone have the application loading in your phones? Please post it in the questions. Awesome, Sean. Jonathan, Jonathan has the application loading. And then I wanna now, so Jonathan is pretty much seeing this thing right here. This is my phone, again, my phone. I want to make it really clear. So let's suppose that Jonathan is a client, right? I don't know where are you based, Jonathan. If you if you would like to share that, of course, if you don't want to, that's fine. But Jonathan, Jonathan is in a completely different place in in where is Jonathan has answered Brazil. Awesome. So I'm in Argentina. Jonathan is Brazil, and let's suppose that Jonathan is one of our customers, right? So we are a software developing shop and we are developing an application for Jonathan and we wanna show this application to him. The usual process we would follow could be building the application, sending, for example, if Jonathan is using an Android phone, an APK, if, if he's using actually 
an, an, Android, an iPhone device that's com more complicated because we have to set channel in a testing process, in a testing special permissions, it's super complicated. We would have to pack the application, build it. It would take, I don't know, five minutes for a large application and send it over, I don't know, share it with the Dropbox folder or something. And he would install the APK, take a long time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until he can see the changes. And suddenly he says something like, hey, I am paying you for something and you just, you should, you have a typo. I don't, I don't like this for your test. I want it. I, I want to change it. And we will have to start the whole process again. Changing the, the, the bug, building the application, building the APK, signing it, submitting it to Jonathan. Jonathan should have to install the APK again. And that is the process. It's, of course, really tedious. So with Expo and with React Native, and especially Expo, what we can do is I can just, for example, I can say, for example, I can say something like, uh, one second, I want to get Sheldon's name. I can change something. Again, what you guys are seeing here, this place is my phone, which was just locked. And I will save these changes. And let's see what happens. I'm saving these changes. The application is being reloaded, as you guys see. This is my phone again. And there you go. The text is now different. Of course, I have just changed text because it was something simple to show you. Jonathan, can you see the new text? This is not set up, by the way. I don't, I don't know, Jonathan. Can you see the new text in the phone right away? Just checking. Let us know if you see it. And I'm sure you will see it because my phone is working and it doesn't mean, I mean, I'm here sitting right here. Yeah, it changed. So Jonathan is actually seeing my change. It just took one minute. So what is going on right here, and thank you, Jonathan, for, for helping us testing this. What we are doing right here is that we are built, the application is going to, is being built by Expo. And I'm going to lock my phone, close this one for now. It's being built by Expo and it's being transferred over the internet to different locations. It's not something that happens locally. It's not local development. Of course, we can switch to local development if we want things to move fast, faster, because in this case, what is happening is that we are using the network to, to communicate the application. So for example, what I was seeing in my phone, even if I'm, sorry, have some background noise. So even if I'm sitting right here, the application had to travel a really long time to actually be in my phone because if you guys check i have i am using a, a, an external server so i don't know if you guys are hooked already but this is pretty cool for those of you that were used to do traditional developer development with with mobile applications this might be really interesting being able to just build a simple application and distribute it in a simple way. It's really huge. So let's go back to our slides so we finish them as quickly as possible and we can start building our first mobile application. That is what we are currently seeing right here. So let's take a look at React Native and let's take a look at React. React is again a front-end framework. It's a really well-designed front-end framework. And React Native follows pretty much the same logic as React. We will see a different uh, set of components. So for those of you that are already used to React, know how React works, and you have been doing some development with React, 
The only things that we will have to change are a few basic components. So for example, with React, we would of course build our own components, but we were at any moment, we will use primitives from the browser. So for example, we would have a really custom component, but at the end of the day, you guys had to use a paragraph, a paragraph like the P tag, a div, an image tag, uh, an anchor tab, a tag, sorry. So we would end up working with primitives uh, from HTML. The same thing happens with React Native. We will have to use similar components, but the names are going to be different. So for example, whenever we want to wrap or whenever we want to encapsulate a few components inside one space, one in one block, instead of using a div, we will be using a view component. So let me show you that really quickly is what we have. And I can put this side by side. We is what you guys can see right here. So I have a view. We also put the simulator right here. We have a view component, right? This external view component, which is wrapping more views and more texts in, in the same block. So instead of using a you just solid text, instead of using when you guys want to put just random text, you can use the text component instead of the P comp component. Whenever you guys want to use an image, you will use an image. We're going to see those examples in a second. Um, also, something that changes is the way we listen to, listen to events. We are used to a few events with React or click on change. There will be different type of events for different type of components in React Native. So for example, a button, instead of hand, handling an on-click event, it's going to handle an on-press event which is super similar. You guys will just have to change the names, but, it, uh, but it's, that's basically it. I wanna show you this live. I want to show you code. So I will be going back and forth with these slides and the code. Um, something before I move forward, something really important here is that you have to understand that you are in a completely different platform now. For those of you used to React, for those of you that are already developing React applications, you are no longer working in a browser. You're now working with a native device, all right? And that device will have a set of native components and you will have to switch, to make the, the, this mind switch into the new platform, all right? That's maybe the most difficult part of working with React Native for those of you, again, working with React making the, the switch in your in your brains to say, I don't have, I'm not working on a tab anymore. I'm working with a completely different platform. I'm working with a completely different set of primitives and this platform behaves differently from what I'm used to. So let's take a look really quickly to how this thing works. I'm going to put side by side again, the, the um, simulator. This is not my phone anymore. This is the, Andro the iOS simulator from, from Xcode, it moves uh, quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the, I'm going to start the, the internet version so everyone in the world can see it. And I will start the same thing with the local one so I can, uh, it will move faster, it's just that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the code. So we can just take from here, what we have is, this is, the code starts, we, we have a couple of entry points for this code. As any other React slash JavaScript application, we're going to have a package.json file. All right, this is an important file, of course, because it's going to set the configuration for our current project. This package, the JSON will list the version of exponent that we, the, sorry, of expo that we're actually using. In this case, we are with the expo version 15. It was released yesterday, two days ago, the version 16. We are in the process of up upgrading that. It's not a big deal. But the important part is that the React version has been, and the React native version has been updated, and now they are using Fiber. I don't know if you guys were, um, we're checking the F8 event from Facebook, but the new announced fiber, it's not new, but they announced fiber as a big thing, the next big thing. It's, it's actually uh, already 
able you guys are actually able to use it right now with this, the 16th version of expo we will update soon so as i was saying the maybe the main the the first entry point is the package.json file this is going to be containing every project that we build it's a simple uh file which is list a couple of dependencies especially the expo react and react native dependencies that we're going to use because of course there will be differences between them and of course we'll list the main file that we will be loaded with our application i'm going to go to the main.js file in a second before that i want to show you another important entry point which is the exp.json file this is the configuration for your expo application every expo react native application needs to have an expo.json and it will set a few different things more importantly the sdk version again we're still with the with the version 15 but we will update soon and you guys will set a few different things later so for example when this application is loaded let me show you expires when this application is loaded you will see this reloading maybe there you go for example this logo this background all these is set right here so for example the icon that you guys can see here or let me show you background image better let me show you the background image right here this one is of course what we were what you guys were seeing right here so this i don't want to just focus on the background image because it's a simple thing what i want to tell tell you with this is that the the exp.json file is a really important one and it will basically give us the ways to configure our application for example whenever we want to start publishing our applications to the google play to the to the app store we will be using this exp.json file all right it's a really important entry point so now configuration is done you guys will find it it's really well documented by the expo guys and there are good examples and the startup the bare bones the seeds are contained basics so let's now switch completely to the code so we said the package.json was referencing our entry point for our application, all right? And that is main.js in our current app. What we have in this exp.js is, let me simplify this. We have a couple of things. The first thing we're doing is we're importing an app component. We're going to take a look at that later. This is a simple React slash React Native component. It, there is no magic with this. It will be, seriously, for those of you that already know React, it's going to be just a simple app, a uh, simple component from React. What we are doing, especially, is we are importing, sorry, we are importing the expo class and we're invoking the register root component call. This is the entry point again, main.js is maybe the entry point, but this is what it's going to hook our app component with the React Native. Um, framework if you want so that is the most important part this is all configuration we have a set of steps here so we will be uh, commenting and uncommenting a few steps to show you new things but basically each one of these steps will define a different component so now let's move to the first app so this one right here this app is being imported from app step one dot chase and it was what we were saying seeing today with the Jonathan text so what we have here is we're export importing React, all right? As simple as that. We're not doing any special thing. Those of you already familiarized with React, you know this. You're importing React and we're creating a React component, component sorry, of course, using the ES6 um, syntax. We are defining a constructor, which we are not using. Again, this is familiar for people from React. And, basic, and finally, we are creating a render method we're defining render method the render method requires to you have to return one component that will be of course your entire application in this case what we're doing is we are just returning this entire view component and this view component has inside another component view that has for example this particular text and this other text we have right here so let me make another hey remoter 
another change right here. And you guys can see the remoter text in the, in, in the simulator. So this is basically working. So what we have here is again, we're using a view component and we're using a text component that is both, those are both imported from the React Native suite of components, right? So this is the most important part. We will be using React to create our own components, but the, 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 primitive, the primitives that we were using, again, in this case, the view and the text, will be from React Native, all right? So we will import view and we will import text and we will basically just instantiate with the traditional JSX syntax, these components. So, of course, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, but I'm going to just go to the second step, in this case, up step two. And let me first show you what it looks like. There you go. I am now switching to the second step. You guys see the simulator, simulator reloading right here. And what we have included now is just an image, all right? We are including an image in our second step. In this case, we're importing the image component from the React native suite of components. And we are now setting some state in the constructor. So this is, again, for those of you familiarized with React, this is something that you already know, it's something that you guys already use, creating a constructor and setting some state. We are then reading the state right here. So for example, if I change this text right here in the state. You guys will see it right there, the new change. And before or above this particular text, what we are doing is we're creating an image. We're instantiating an image component. Again, this image component is a, is a primitive from React Native. We're setting some style. And finally, we're giving it the source of the image that we want to include, as simple as that. Of course, this source can be different things. We can have local pictures. For example, we'll have base 64 pictures. We can have external images, etc. What we're showing you right here is that we are creating a component that just receives a set of properties as you guys already know. So let's move now to the third step. I'm going to command this one and command this one and show you first how it look, looks like, step three right here and what we have here is that we have included a button at the bottom of this view so you, can you see it right here at the bottom so we have the image as before we have the text we have the text and now we have another view component that basically wraps this this other button component so i can of course change all these and this will be reloaded for me it's not a big deal at all uh, i can put it right there um, we are just doing some styling so it looks better. It's not required. I can put it whatever I want. So what I'm seeing here is again we're in, we're importing a different primitive. In this case, the button. What you guys used to to use with your traditional React application, of course, was something like an anchor tag, right? In this case, we're using a button. It's a primitive kind of new component because it's it wasn't there. It's not been there for a long time. And we are instantiating the component, passing a few properties, right? We're passing the title, what it has to say. I'm going to put, uh, please tap on me. So it's a new text for you guys to see it. Sorry, there you go. We're setting some color. You guys can change it, of course. Please tap on me. It's what you see right there. Uh, accessibility, again, a huge win from native applications. Accessibility, it's something really cool. And finally, and maybe the most important part, is the on press property. So here we are doing something whenever the user taps here. So do you see the opacity? I am tapping on the simulator. I am tapping. And the opacity is, it, there is some opacity created on top of the, the bottom that it's done, everything is done natively. And of course, when I release the top, it goes back to what it was. And what it's doing, it's actually invoking this particular callback on press button. So whenever I press or I tap on this particular button, I'm invoking this callback on press button that I have defined right here. And the only thing that I'm, going, I'm seeing 
the only thing that I'm seeing for now, it's just something logged into my console. So I'm going to switch to my terminal and we'll, we will see if we have a bunch of pressed messages. There you go, you have all these pressed messages. Let me go back and please take a look Keep keep your 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 side into the left side of this screen for the for the terminal. Let me put a few blank lines. So whenever I tap, I tap, I tap, I tap, I see the pressed message being locked. All right, and that's because this callback is being executed. From now on, this is all React guys. You know how to handle this. So for example, I could change this and I could do something like this dot state dot and if anytime someone taps on this button. I can, I don't know, change the state. I can do something like set state, state. And I could pass, for example, uh, I could add a new exclamation sign to this text. So I could do something like title equals this dot state dot title plus a new exclamation mark. And let's see if this actually works. This is like coding, so something might break. Top, reloaded. Uh, what happened? This dot set state. Sorry, my bad. So as you see, I'm adding more and more exclamation marks with every new tab. All right. So what I want to show you here is that this is basically a React. This is what you guys know. You are creating your own component, you're defining a constructor, you're thinking about state, you're thinking about callbacks, you're binding those callbacks, you're um, doing performing some particular action for each one of these callbacks, and finally, or, or maybe the most important part, of course, we are rendering our components, and our components are just hierarchies of components nesting, being nested together. So this is the, the second part. We are doing using a button. We're using an image component. Let's switch to the four, fourth example. We're going to go and command the fourth example. I'm going to load it as usual so you guys can see how it basically works. And what we have here is a different... Oh, by the way, something that I didn't say. I am not... I haven't instantiated the Android simulator. But if you guys open this application with an Android simulation, a simulator, or with an, with an Android phone, phone uh, to, to make it easier, you guys will see a different button. Because buttons in the Android device are different from what they are in iPhone devices. And that's pretty cool. Again, we are trying to have native compo components. We're trying to, use, to show our user um, a standard uh, and, and a standard experience, all right, uh, a regular experience. So they are used, an Android user is used to a certain type of buttons and an iPhone user is used to a different type of buttons and they will have the, the different, different, different button, buttons based on what they see. So um, what we're doing this in this fourth example is we're showing you a different type of component in this case, the touchable opacity, and we are creating here a touchable opacity with the text part. And why are we doing this? This was just for historical reasons. This was the way we had to create buttons with React Native before the button component was actually created. We were creating a, just a text component, and we were wrapping that in a touchable opacity. The touchable opacity component has the on press uh, event. It, was, it just triggers the on press event. And of course, it has opacity when I tap on it. So if you guys see I tapping and there is a, an overlay, there is opacity created on top of the button right there. Um, so this was the historical way we had, not to show you some, some history, but because we want to show you that there is, again, this is a different platform. We can put just in traditional React, we can put an on click event in pretty much any component and that is going to work. It's not the case in, uh, for React Native. We cannot put uh, an on press on top of a text component because a text doesn't respond, respond, respond sorry, to taps or to presses. You guys need to wrap that 
in a touchable kind of component. And that's because, again, the, we are working with a different problem. So what we see here is we're just creating a touchable opacity. We are giving it the text, and we're touching it. And the call box is the same one, button press. So if I show you guys here, uh, button press, it just handles the same way, right? As simple as that. So now, what we want to do is we see that this thing is useful. Right, so we are using this touchable, this combination of touchable opac sorry, opacity plus text components a lot. So what we want to do, of course, is reuse that component. We want to refactor it. We want it to leave. We want to abstract our, our ourselves from this particular component. We want to create an abstraction. We want to create a custom component. So what we're going to do, I'm going to open the fifth example you will see that it's pretty much the same thing but what the change we have in this case is that we have created a custom component the one that we're importing right here right it's living inside component custom bottom and we are returning pretty much the same thing as before but in this case we're instantiating the custom bottom passing what should what should it do with the on press event and what is the title? What should the title read? So let me put side by side application four and application five. This is our entire touchable opacity um, component. In this case, we have replaced all these with just the inclusion of our custom button. Of course, this is not new at all for people coming from React. What we want to show you here is that, again, this just feels and behaves as React. You guys can just create your own components, instantiate them, and they will just work. So the custom button, again, it has the same thing. So let's move now to more interesting things. I'm going to switch to the sixth example. There you go. I'm loading the app. And what you guys see right here is let me open the sixth example is a text input at the bottom of this app so i can change this text right i can do hello hello world for example and i am both including a text input and i am in the same in the same app i am listening to the changes of this text and I'm updating my app, as you guys can see right here. So let's see really quickly how that works. We are, first of all, including the text input component. And we're instantiating that text input in the view below the custom component. We are instantiating that text input. We're passing, of course, some, st some styles. We're giving it an initial value, the one from the, the state the initial state we are saying placeholders auto correct we are setting different things these are native oh, these are native things to set for our components which are pretty cool for example you guys can see place error there you guys can see you guys can see a lot of things a lot of things for example you see something special for android this is something you guys will see a lot a lot of you can play differently from ios and android so there will be special things to set for each one of them in depending on the of the platform platform and more importantly what we have is this on change text event all right so this is maybe the most important part on change text event what's going on is whenever i am typing something here 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 i am invoking this particular on change text event and what it's doing it's receiving the actual text passed right here right here and it's setting that text as the state of this component finally the text that i'm displaying right here where it's just shots right here it's the title value from the state that we have for this custom component so the text input is updating the state the title on the state and the text component right here is reading that particular state that's why we have these two binding 
um, connection. All right, so that's as simple as that. Also, something interesting here is that we are checking, in this case, we're importing the dimensions component from React Native. Um, just something for you guys to check later. There are many useful components out there, right? Which are not, of course, the most useful ones, or not, sorry, not useful. All of them are useful. The most common ones that so you guys will be using text a lot, button at all, uh, sorry, a lot, text input a lot. Dimensions, there are many platforms, there are many different types of components which are interesting uh, to work with. In this case, dimensions, uh, we are using it. Oh, there you go. We're getting the full, the full width. It's not actually a component. We're never instantiating the component. It's more like a utility class. And to get the whole width of this particular viewport, so then we can render these um, text input. Let me show you right here. This is the style of the text input. We can render the text input with 20 pixels, pixels less than full width of the device, all right? So that will work consistently across different devices. All right, so let's move to the seventh example. We are going to command this line and we're going to uncommand this line. Seven, there you go. And I'm going to open this up. And what you guys will be seeing here is, I'm going to go back for a second. A uh, type of list view, we're actually using a scroll view, but this is something also that is different from mobile and the traditional web slash browser platform. Because as you guys know, the, the web has this UL component, which is pretty old, but things behave differently in phones. So we are, for example, in this case, what we're creating, oh, sorry, is a scroll view. I'm going to show the code because that might be easier. So we have a bunch of items to render. Those items are hard coded in our, in our uh, state. And what we are doing is we are, where is it? Uh, text view right here. We are instantiating an, a, a scroll view component. And we are passing a set of children components. I'm going to show you these render items in a second. You guys, those of you used to React and how to render UL lists are already know how to this works. But basically, these render items is mapping all these items and it's building just a list of text components to render inside the scroll view. So each one of these um, text components, of course, will have a key. This is React basic and it will have the item name right here. So for example, if I change, we'll almost, almost done right here. If I scroll down, you guys will see the component that I have right here. All right, so what we are including is a scroll view. You guys can put it every, anywhere and you can render any components of this scroll view for example, if you guys are creating an Instagram clone, you will, the feed, the Instagram feed, it will be loaded with a scroll view on each, on each photo with the creator of the photo, the comments, the likes, all of that will be embedded in each one of those components that are actually inside a scroll view. So this is an interesting, and, and, and it's a pretty useful and common component in React Native. All right, so it's just import scroll view and use it. Um, finally, we have the step eight, and I'm going to show you really quickly. And in this particular um, in this particular example, what we want to show you is how to use the platform part, not because you guys will be doing this a lot, but again, to stress the fact that you will be working with a, with a different platform and with a different mindset. All right, in this case, there will be differences between the two, between the applications on iOS and Android, and it's a good thing to understand that they, they will happen. 
and how to handle them. In this case, we're using the platform. We're importing the platform class, right, from React Native. And we're using that platform to set a special text inside our text view. So this might be, this might seem like a trivial example, but it's really important because it will let you guys understand or, or it will let you build your application for a different type of platforms, which of course is super useful all the time. So this is pretty much the first part of the application that we want to show you. We are doing a lot of things together. We are, for example, again, rendering a scroll view. We're creating a text input. We're setting, but we're creating buttons. We're creating custom components, text, images, and all that. Uh, there is something interesting we're working on. I think I can show you this for now. This is not yet built, but we're showing you how to build animations using Lottie, which is a brand new Airbnb library, a library released by Embry Airbnb a few, a few weeks, months ago. It's a pretty new library. And we're showing you how easy it is to create animations. We're actually, this animation is created by exporting the data from After Effects, the Adobe software. So we're export, exporting this data.json file, and we are hooking up that JSON file with Lodi right here. We are, we're both importing Lodi and um, animated, all right, from, from React Native. And what we are using is, where is it? Right there. We are instantiating and we're playing the animation. So you guys can see it right here. This looks good in the simulator. If you guys load it in your phones, it will look even better. It will work and it will perform even better. And just what we want to show you here is that there is no way to compete with native applications. Those, those of you who have had the chance to check and to work with hybrid applications, you will feel the difference instantly. All right? There is a huge difference between hybrid applications and native applications native applications feel much much better all right so you guys have any question i encourage you this project is posted so i encourage you guys to go to our repo to our organization here search for expo project bones you guys can clone the code this is all free and open source there is a in the wiki if you guys check the wiki uh, I think we have it right here. Setting up your environment, run a basic React Native and Expo application. You have your wiki, the wiki here that explains you how to install pretty much everything, all the JavaScript part, how to install the exp command line tool. So this one that I'm using right here, exp minus v. Um, all these, right, it's explained in detail. The simulators, right, simulators for Android and for I for iPhone, um, everything is explained right here. Important, with Expo, you will be able to develop both for your simulators. Of course, that is fast, right? That reloads fast. You guys can even hook up hot reloading, which is pretty cool. Um, but also, you could, we will be able to develop with your simulators. So I encourage you, please pay attention to this. If you guys are going to do something with this, if you are going to follow this explanation don't install the simulators try first to run things in your local phone all right as we did today with our devices try to scan the qr code build the application in your computer scan the qr code and build that in your phone if that works then move on to work with simulators all right so any questions So we we are cre we have created. So why are we doing this? And we are trying to raise the awareness of how simple it is to develop React Native and Expo applications. Or sorry, how to build 
native, native obligations using React Native with the help of Expo. That would be the correct way of expressing it. And the we have just released a course, which is of course an in-depth explanation of all of, all of these with a lot of practice. So I encourage you to check it, all right? I'm going to share with you the remoter intro uh, React Native. One second. There you go. So we have just released a course. It's a fourth week, four week course, an entire month, two classes per week. It's an actual class, all right? It's like these, but it's a private class. You guys will have, it's not a webinar, it's an actual class. You guys will have the chance to interact with us and we will be doing a lot of practice. What we have done right here is we show you something we we were coding and you guys were sitting and watching. Our courses are completely different. They are highly practical. So instead of just watching and listening, you guys will be coding, all right? And we will be the ones listening and help you out, keep helping you out with your issues. So what, what you guys are going to be doing in this course is again, doing a lot of development. You, we will work with an Instagram clone. We will work, for example, with pretty cool things like embedding maps, embedding using the camera, uh, by the way, all of that is free in our in our in our organization. So check it out later if you want, even if you do not join the course. So I encourage you guys if you are interested in doing dev uh, mobile development. In one month, you will be able to be working with real mobile applications, right? With a lot of important and interesting features, and it's a pretty cool thing. Um, for those of you that stayed this long. Please send us an email, all right? Questions at remoter.com, all right? I'm going to type here questions at remoter at remoter.com. And please email us because we will be sharing a few discount codes for our courses, all right? A good 20, 25% off for our courses. So it's just email us if you're interested and we will share that um promo code later so that is basically it i hope you guys are now encouraged to build your own applications even if you do not do not do not sorry sorry showing our courses i we encourage you to just go try to do something by yourselves it's super simple remember our first slide right remember remember these mobile is eating the world right everything is going to be mobile five years from now. So start now, start early, be, be early adopters, all right? Be the one setting trend, do not be the laggers. You, you guys will have a lot of advantages by starting this trend, all right? And by, by jumping to the wave right now. So any questions, just let us know. We are working, we're improving our courses. We will be releasing a React course soon to uh, so just let us know. Big praise to the people at Expo. All right, these guys are building a lot of features. They are super, they are great also for the React Native people. So if you guys, again, if you, even if you don't join our courses, keep an eye on, on React Native and Expo because they are doing things really well. All right, if you guys don't have any questions, I will just salute you here with Matias. We want to... Thank you for being here. Again, this was all live streamed. It will, it, it is recorded. So follow us on Twitter. We will share it. Follow us and uh, like us on Facebook. You will have there the video and also on YouTube in case you want to see it again. The code is open source posted. You guys can start working with that today. Thank you very much and see you around.